Hello there, my name's Joe and welcome to the channel. In this video, we're going to do another a pick and mix. So uh, we'll start off with a Excel model. We'll add, um, I'm going to add an embedding this time. And then we'll add a Laura and we'll see what we get with those. And then to finish off quickly, we'll play around with clip and we'll see what difference using clip can make to our images. So um, let's start now by having a quick run through my workflow. So let's start with our loader nodes. So first of all, we have the load checkpoint. And today I'm using the DreamShaper XL uh, checkpoint model. Uh, next will be um, the embedding. There isn't a loader node for this, but um, I'm adding the embedding next. And to add an embedding, we just um, will add some text to the positive prompt and we'll generate an image and see what that looks like. Then after that, we will use the LoRa node that we see here, load LoRa. I'll add comments in the uh, in my YouTube how to load the uh, load LoRa and the clip set last layer nodes if you haven't done this before. Um, so the LoRa we're using today is called a worry fire. I'm setting it to a level of one. And we're also using the clip set last layer node. Um, which I'm using at um, clip skip minus two for most of this demo, but we'll play around with clip skip at the very end. Um, so that's the load of those. So let's now take a quick look at the prompts. For our positive prompt, we have a battle worn female cyborg with white hair and wearing an eye patch covering one damaged eye. Subject is facing the viewer. Subject is center of image with a futuristic alien spaceship background. For the negative prompt, I've just used the default text and watermark. So let's quickly take a look at the case sampler. For this demo, I'm using um, a fixed seed of one, two, three, four, five. I'm using six steps and a CFG of two. The sampler is DPM++ STE, the scheduler is Karis, and Denoise is one. So from the case sampler, the um, image will go to, into the VA decode and then into a save image. Just to look at these last um, three notes here very quickly, I've just made some notes for myself just to help me copy and paste some of the details in later when we come to the LoRa's and the embeddings, etc. I've got here a note from, um, this is from Miles Belez, who made a, a comment on one of my previous uh, videos about clip skip, and he put a very good detailed description of what clip and clip skip is. Um, I'm grateful for that. Uh, so I put that in here. I'll add this workflow to my Dropbox if anybody wants this. And if you do use it, have a, have a read of this, because this is a pretty, pretty damn good description. Um, lastly, we've got this LoRa info node. I'll add details how to install this if you want it. But this is very good. You can call up any LoRa that you've got and it will give you the um, trigger words that you need. It will take you to the Civit AI page and it will give you some examples of um, that particular LoRa being used. So there you go. So let's move on now and start generating an image. So for our first image, I'm just going to generate an image using the prompt only. So no embedding yet. The LoRa I'm going to disable by selecting bypass. Um, but the clip set last layer is going to be left at minus two throughout. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, we'll play with that at the very end. So with just the positive prompt only, let's um, Q prompt and see what our start picture looks like. So Q prompt. So we have our first image. We have our female Android, white hair, got an eye patch. There's some very nice detail in the, in the image. The background's a little bland. So I'm, I'm hoping to improve that a little bit by um, adding an embedding. 
So let's move on now and look at how we can add and use an embedding. Now embeddings, um, like LoRa's, are small models that we can use to enhance or embellish our image. Um, they're available via Civit AI. All you need to do is if you go into Civit AI, select models, and then go to your filter button, and then you can select embeddings, and that will take you to all the embeddings um, that are available. Another way of doing it, once you've installed, and this goes for LoRa's and for checkpoints, once you've got anything installed in your Comfy UI, if you happen to use this workflow manager um, that I've ranted at several times about, I think it's just so useful, you have this models button here. And if I click on that, you can see I can, um, it's highlighted at the moment on checkpoints. These are all the checkpoints I have currently loaded. I can click on LoRa's and we have all the LoRa's that are loaded. And by clicking on any of these, these will take you to the correct page in Civit AI. And that becomes important with LoRa's and embeddings because more often than not, there are trigger words involved. However, we're looking at embeddings at the moment. So I'm going to click on embeddings. We've got a few here, but we are going to be looking at the this one here, which is called Clutter SDXL. And basically, um, what this embedding does is to add stuff into the background of your image. Now we can see here from these example images, this is probably where it works strongest in these kind of um, settings, probably more so than my cyborg alien type setting, but we should still get a result from it. However, let, let's, so let's take a look at this embedding. So down here, We've got the author, which is Zovia. If we want to download this embedding, we click on this, download it. Once we've downloaded the file, we need to copy across into our Comfy UI folder, find the models folder, and inside the models folder, there will be a folder called embeddings, and you just drop it in there. Once you've done that, you need to be aware that there is, um, as I mentioned earlier, it is a trigger word. When you want to activate this uh, embedding, you need to put in the name of the embedding, and I'll show you that in a second, plus the trigger word. So um, I think that's about it. And if you scroll down on these pages, usually you'll get some example um, images of it in use. So assuming that you've downloaded the embedding, you've copied it into your embeddings folder in Comfy UI. Let's now return to our workflow and add it. So come across here. What we want to do now, as I mentioned, the embedding will be added via the positive prompt. So I've already just made a note of what I need. And let me just copy and paste that. So in my positive prompt, let me just tidy it up a little bit. So I've added brackets and then the name of the embedding, which is CXL hyphen mech, then a colon, and then the strength that you want to use. So I'm using the strength of 1.3, and then you close the brackets. So that is what's calling up the embedding. And then I put a comma and a space. And then after that, you then um, add the trigger word, which we saw um, here. So that needs to go in as well. So you, you need to add both the name of the embedding and the trigger word. So let's try generate now. So we still haven't switched on the lure yet. We'll look at that. Next, so let's now try and generate an image and see what difference this embedding makes to our female cyborg um, here. So let's cue prompt. Okay, so we now have our image with the embedding added. So our main subject has um, 
change. Mostly this, um, the eye patch has changed to this mask effect thing. Not so keen on that. I would have preferred it stayed with the eye patch. I think that is something, if I wasn't doing this demo, I would play around with the prompt a bit more and try to go back to, to what we had. But I don't want to change the, the prompt for this demo. Um, but I do like what is added in the background. This really quite frightening little uh, addition is, um, I think, it really adds to the image. And I'm pretty sure there's um, quite a bit of extra detail being added into the Android's armor. So, yeah, pretty pleased, except for the mask thing. Um, I could work on that if, if I wanted to. So let's um, turn our attention now to um, add a Laura into the mix and see what we get. Let's start by enabling the load Laura. So let's select bypass. That's now live. And you may remember we're using the Wowifier XL Laura. So, and I'm using a strength of one, but let's take a look at the Civit AI page for this Laura. So again, I'm going to go back to my models as I showed you previously. I'm going to click on Laura's and if I scroll down, should find somewhere worry fire if I can find it. Here we go. I left click on that and it takes me immediately to the Civit AI page for the worry fire XL uh, Laura. So um, this it's, it's actually it's, it's a pretty good Laura. If, if I just scroll down to begin with, and you and you can see some of the examples of stuff that's been created using it, it is it adds some nice detail, it does some nice stuff. But what you don't get on this page is a description. There should be here at the very front should be a description. What does this Laura do? You don't get that, but it is a good one. So notwithstanding that, let's look at the rest of it. So the author is Moon Crypto Wow. To download it, we come up here, click on download. And as with the embeddings, once it's been downloaded, you'll copy it across into your Comfy UI, into your models, and then into your Laura's folder. Um, you also need to be aware uh, like embeddings, more often than not, there is a trigger word, and there is a trigger word for this Laura, which is Art by Moon Crypto. Wow. So there you go. So I'll add links to um, everything that we've done in Civit AI in, into, um, into my YouTube. So let's go back to our workflow. Click away from that. So we've added the Laura. That's ready to go. Let's now um, generate an image and see what this brings to the table. So let's go back to QPrompt and see what we get. So the Wowifier XL Laura has made quite a significant impact on this image. It's um, it's very detailed. It's, it's, it's really quite good. I can't, I like um, photorealistic images, and th this is slightly less so, but there's amazing detail in this, so it probably just comes down to uh, personal preference. Um, so what I thought we'd do now is, well, just to finish off on, I'm going to generate a few images, changing the um, clip skit layer. So let's to finish off, let's look at the clip set last layer node and what it can do. Now, I'm not going to try and describe what clip and clip skit does. That's why I added this little, uh, this useful little notes here because it's, um, I couldn't do it well. However, what's important or what was important to me um, from using this is that we can make changes by adjusting the clip skip layer to our image, but without fundamentally changing the image. So for instance, if I was to change the seed, if I was to randomize it or increment it, decrement it, whatever, I'm going to get a totally different picture. I don't want a totally different picture. I like this picture, 
but I'd like to see if if there are any small variations that might actually be better, but without changing the whole thing overall. So one way we can do that is we can try changing the um, clip skip layer, take a look and see if we like it or not. So we're on minus two. As I understand it, minus one is almost like the off switch. So minus two is usually the start point, And that's why I've used minus two throughout. But let's now put it up to minus three. And what I'm hoping for is that this image, um, in, in terms of its, its layout, will pretty much stay the same, but we'll see some um, smaller changes to it. But overall, the image won't change too much anyway. So minus three, let's Q prompt and see what we get. Now, I don't know about you, but I think I prefer this to the previous image. I quite like this. So um, and as, you, as you increase the clip skip layer, um, as I understand it anyway, you're moving further and further away from the prompt. So you may start seeing um, quite some significant changes the, the, the higher you, you go up but let's go so we're on minus three now let's go minus four um so i think this is an improvement actually let's see what we get with minus four and see if it's even better or will it be worse so minus four q prompt another good image i think it um, we're not seeing any anything there bad happening just yet at um, minus four i'm going to do two more and then we'll call it a day at that so let's change to clip skip to minus five and q prompt so another fine image i, I don't see any any great problems with that one um so before I, i'll do a minus six just to finish off but before i do that did anybody notice my error earlier and uh what I forgot to do was add the trigger word for the LoRa. When I added the LoRa, I always do this on my LoRa YouTubes. However, I was quite lucky that um, enabling the LoRa was enough to activate it. So we did get the effects of the LoRa. So I, I was very lucky there. Having said that, if it hadn't worked, it would have, I'm, I'm sure that would have prompted me to, to look again that something's gone wrong. But uh, yeah, apologies for that. So I should have, when I added the LoRa, I should have added an extra line with the Laura trigger word, but um, I'm a bit of a knobhead and I didn't do that. So never mind. So we'll change the, going back to the clip set last layer node, to finish off, we'll go minus six. And what I'll do is at the end of this YouTube, I will just add a very, a very brief slideshow of all the images that we've generated today and uh, I'll have a look through that and see which one I think is the nicest one and that's the one I'm going to use as the thumbnail so for the last time let's um, generate at minus six Q prompt so the final um, image was okay too I was kind of expecting it to start drifting slowly but surely more away from the the prompt but it hasn't done that um, up to minus six so all's good worth mentioning that for um sdxl models there are you can go up to minus 24 in clip and if it was an sd 1.5 it just up to minus 12 and uh, i think that's about as much as i can say and show you about clip well that just about wraps it up for today um again apologies for my error um, I am only human, unlike my cyborg here. Um, however, notwithstanding that, I hope you found this useful. Thank you very much for your time. It is appreciated. Do have a good day and goodbye.